happy to see you on our very last day together. I've loved doing this activity each day and then filming it to share it with you. And I'd love to hear what you thought. Drop me a line on Facebook or on YouTube if you like, and we can chat there. And I would love you to share it with a friend if you think it's been valuable to you. I'm going to keep it up for about a week and then pull it down mid-January. So how was last night? How are you feeling now? Am I speaking a little loud? Should I whisper? Hope you're feeling well on this very first day of the new year. So yesterday we made our goals and having a goal means you are so much more likely to achieve whatever it is you desire. But creating a realistic action plan based on your goals is even better. So if there's something you want to experience, have, do, be, an action plan based on creating sustainable habits, and that's the key, sustainable habits will get you to the outcome you want. Our lives are just essentially a collection of habits we do regularly. People who achieve their goals are simply people who have mastered the art of choosing habits that support their life's ambition. So day five is about creating your own personal success plan that will carry you to your finish line. You'll be taking the work you did on day one, day two, day three to make a task list of actions that you've already proven you know works for you. It'll be based on what you've learned from your successes and from your failures. This is why exploring the painful emotions from day three can help even more than the happy emotions of day two. Failure and painful emotions, honestly, are great teachers. So before we start, let's do our ritual for the very last time. Follow the same steps you've been doing each day. Turn off your phone and any notifications. Tell your fellow householders you're out of action for about 15 to 30 minutes. Put on your headset, turn on soft, gentle music, and close the door. Grab a pencil and paper and light your candle. Sit on your chair, kick off your shoes, and place your feet firmly on the floor. Remember, we're doing that because grounding yourself in the present and in the room by feeling the solidness and the realness of the floor. Take a deep breath in and push out your belly at the same time. Breathe in through your nose and expel it out through your mouth. Do it with me now. And let's say out loud together. This is my year in review ritual. This is my time to reflect and learn from 2021 and create my best ever year yet, 2022. These moments I spend now in contemplation and learning will pay off over the whole 2022. Hug yourself, reassuring yourself, I'm safe and I am in charge of what happens and I am safe. All right, let's start. Based on the goals for 2022 that you envisioned yesterday, what do you need to do on a daily or weekly or monthly basis to make them real? Now that's in essence what we're doing today. It really doesn't get any more difficult for that. But for people who've never done this before, I've broken it down into five steps. So I'm chunking it down to make it really tactical and easy to follow if you've never done it before. But if you wanna to race to the finish line, that's what we're doing, writing habits that match the goals. All right, so think about this. If someone in the world has achieved the life that you wanna live or is experiencing an emotion that you want, Find out what their daily habits are. We are all just a product of our daily habits. So we'll kick this off by exploring what you already know what to do. In the past year, 2021, what do you already know how to do that can get you to a successful outcome? Write that down or circle it. Conversely, looking at the, what you worked on on day three, what do you know that you need to be mindful of to avoid? What's going to stop you from reaching your goals? So you're looking at the work you've done, day one, day two, day three, and you're looking at the actions that led to you feeling and experiencing what you desire. Because I bet that you already know how to do some of the habits. So go searching for success. What do you already know how to do? And really just pull that out and highlight it. So again, you're looking at the work you've already done over the past few days, day one, day two, day three, and you're reviewing what you've written. And then you're comparing that with the goals that you established on day four yesterday. And you're seeing 
Do you already know how to do some habits that will lead you to be successful with those goals? And if you do, write down what those habits are. And also be mindful of what happened on day three. Did you have a stumbling block with some of those habits? Be mindful of that. Start to think about, is it because you didn't know enough or maybe there's an obstacle that you keep coming up against? Just be mindful of that. Maybe write that one down because we're gonna bring that in in just a minute. Now, if you wanted, you could pause me now if you know what you're doing with this activity. For some of you, this is gonna be really super straightforward. For others, you're probably thinking, oh, I'm still a bit at sea. It's no problem. So let me reiterate, 2022 will end up being just a collection of habits that you do daily, weekly, or monthly. The habits you choose will either get you to your heart's desire or they will create a hurdle, a barrier to your success. Let's take the most common goal in the Western world. I want to lose weight this year. So to make this happen, what are the habits that lead a person to being their correct weight? I'm pretty sure you already know. It's an uncompromising. And what I mean by that is it's daily. Whether you're busy, stressed, tired, it's a daily commitment to healthy eating, good quality sleep every single night, stress management every single day. If you ate nothing but real food, so that's no processed food at all, when you are hungry only, no snacks, you went to bed early, you woke up after about seven to nine hours of uninterrupted sleep, every day you manage your stress, so yoga, meditation, walking, however that works for you, and you had the appropriate muscle mass for your height and your age, you would be a long way to your body safely normalizing weight to what it wants you to be. And if someone was thinking, but hang on, I already do all those things every single day. Well, then there's some sort of gap in what you're doing and what your body wants to have. So that gap needs an expert. And so in my eyes, that's a qualified naturopath or a qualified nutritionist. And that's someone who needs to investigate what's actually happening in your body and why is it when doing the right things doesn't work? And what is the plan they need to put in place for you based on your body chemistry? And if not, you've actually very much set up an environment in your body that means when you did seek advice from an expert, an evidence-based naturopath or nutritionist, I'd be pretty convinced that your body would respond super well and really quickly to the kind of herbal remedies that I would put in place based on your blood tests to indicate what you need. Now, does that make sense? So if you listen to that list of habits and think, nah, that sounds too hard. Well, that's okay. This is a judgment-free zone here. So then your goal is just a wish. And that's all right. But if you listen to that list of habits and say, but I already do that. Okay, so what that tells me now is you need an expert's intervention. So this now goes on your habit list. Find the expert. It could be an evidence-based naturopath or nutritionist. Please just make sure that your expert is actually qualified. Another way to think about this is you want to learn a language. Well, step one is find the expert to teach you. Get lots of help at the start. Practice daily. Be diligent. Now, will you be able to speak that language on February 1? No, you will not. Will you be able to speak the language fluently on the 31st of December? Well, you may, depending on how much practice you put in, but it might be an extra year but you'll certainly be a long way to getting to your goal by the end of the year, whether you make it exactly or not. That example seems to make sense to a lot of people. We all have sort of an innate understanding that if we were to learn a language and we practice daily, that by no way from January 1 to February 1 would we be an expert. And yet when it comes to weight loss, a lot of people, when they don't hit their weight loss goal on February 1, they gave themselves such a burdensome list of habits and such an aggressive timeline for making their goal. It wasn't, oh, I'll get there by December 31. It was, if I don't get there by February 1, I'm just going to give up. 
So we're going to talk about this in a little bit more detail in just a minute because I've got to tell you, it's actually one of the things that I used to do. And in fact, in 2021, I did it. I gave myself such a restrictive list of habits that I needed to do that when life threw me a few curveballs, I just literally ran out of time and my deadlines were way too aggressive. So you're not alone. If this has happened to you in the past, it's all learnings. Okay, so the first step is to list. For you to create and manifest your 2022 vision, what habits do you need to start or stop or modify or learn? Review the work you did on day two and day three. In the past, what helped you, what hindered you? Now list these habits out. You can pause me now if you want. You more than likely have an enormously long list when you do this activity. It's too much for one human. So the next step is to sort. What's the outcome for 2022 that you want the most? Just choose one. And from your long list of habits and tasks, which are the ones that are most likely to be the most important for that number one goal? Now circle these. All right, let's now simplify. We tend to overestimate what we can get done on an average day, an average week, and an average month. The science of human nature tells us it is better to perform small, realistic steps daily that slowly build and grow to 365 days. If you need help with this, I'd love you to stop and watch a YouTube by a guy called BJ Fogg. He's a Stanford professor and he specializes in behavioral change. And he talks on the topic of how to create the life you want via small changes in habits. But what happens if you don't know what to do or you don't have the skills? For example, with weight loss, you're literally doing all the right things now but your hormones are letting you down because you're just not getting anywhere. Well, then you have a skills gap. You need help to learn something. This is the next step, skills gap. When you need to learn something new, you might need help from a teacher or a coach or a mentor or a trainer to learn the skills as well as to do the plan or schedule for that habit. I believe in never leaving the scene of a goal without taking action. So what I mean here is, here's my hot tip, open up Google or ask a question in the comments in Facebook now or in YouTube. More than likely, me or someone else in our group will be able to recommend or refer you to someone who's excellent, who we know is an expert. Another way to approach this is if you're wanting to feel, be, have, learn something someone else has previously experienced, more than likely, there's a blog post or a YouTube video of someone who has forged that path before you. It's time to start the fun task of checking out who's gone before you as a role model. Now, please, I do not expect you to nail these steps completely or perfectly. Just do the best you can with the knowledge you have today. It's actually helpful to you if you keep revisiting and revising these habits and tasks of today throughout the year. As you learn more, you get better and you refine your list of habits. So what we're doing right now is creating the first draft of a list of habits you need to reach your goals. You'll revise this and tweak this list throughout the year, just like I said. And here's a pro tip. Make your list of habits small. Actually try to underestimate what you need to do. Don't make your list of habits so onerous you'll have no time to complete them, nor so hard you'll flame out in just a few weeks when life gets busy or stressful. Remember, you've 365 days in total. I know I keep saying that, but start low and go slow. Remember the hare and the tortoise? Be the tortoise. My own story and that of countless clients in the past is that we made a New Year's resolution to get fit. I'll share my story. I joined a gym on January 2nd and I signed up to a personal trainer because you know I'm safe, right? I knew I had a skills gap. By January 3rd, I was profoundly injured. Doing a leg squat, the trainer I said I should be able to do based on my height and weight and my previous history. I actually damaged a disc, three discs in total, in my back, and I spent six weeks actually unable to walk. It took me years of physical rehabilitation and lots of cash before I learned how to live pain-free. And if you've never experienced something similar to this, 
let my story be a gift to you for the new year. Please integrate the learnings from my mistakes. The key is create small, sustainable habits that you do all year. Specific to physical fitness, the learning is always start low and go slow. Starting January 2nd with an achievable level of effort. And if you haven't done formal exercise recently, please start lower than what you think you can do. Let's start with a five minute walk, five push ups, a wall squat, just one. Then each day, add one minute more, add one more push up until you feel as if you're getting close to reaching your limit, but you're not there yet. And then stay at that level for a few weeks. Let your body, let your joints, let your cartilage, let your ligaments join you at that level. Once that level feels easy, then add a little bit more time, another minute, another repetition, another weight, and again, stop before you feel pushed. This strategy is actually something called graded exercise. It's an evidence-based strategy. It's essentially the recommendation on start low and go slow and turn your fitness into achievable daily habits. And if you're interested, it's an evidence-based strategy for chronic fatigue sufferers or someone returning to exercise after injury who's not an athlete in their day job. This process will mean that you'll finish your year hitting your physical health goals and not worse off with a chronic injury to add to your life's journey. Okay, let's do the final step. By now, you'll have a list of habits you know you can do and a list of habits you know you'll need some help with. Now, with what you know, create a rough draft. This is only a first draft and it's going to be tweaked a lot of your daily, weekly and monthly routines. When are you going to get up, for example? When are you going to go to bed? When are you going to do grocery shopping, menu planning, cooking? When are you going to do your stress management? Now, my hot tip here is to build in some slack and flexibility. And like I said at the start, one of the things I've learned from doing this myself from my 2021 is I schedule myself so tightly that at the second or third hurdle of the year, I just literally ran out of time. Remember, 365 days in a year. I know I keep repeating it, but it's true. Start low, go slow. <laughs> I'm one of those people that loves detail and I tend to love scheduling and planning. So doing this kind of activity is actually my happy place. But being in practice for as long as I have, I've learned that some people literally hate this step. It's an anathema to them. And if that's the case, I'd suggest reaching out to a friend or family member or loved one and asking for help. I find people who have an aspect of like project management in their job, they're usually pretty good at this. So go to project managers or engineers or personal assistants. Also people who are in HR and payroll because of the amount of scheduling and planning that they have to do and skills gap knowledge they have to do. Look, it's either your zone of genius or it's not. It doesn't say anything about you or your smarts. This is simply a skill like knitting. You either know what you gotta do or you get someone to help you start. Defer to the experts. People seriously study behavioral change and behavioral habits. One of my faves that's made a big difference to me and to many people I know is a book by a guy called James Clear called Atomic Habits. I found reading it honestly super boring, but I downloaded it on Audible and I listened to it each day when I was going for my walk or doing my daily chores and I'd finished it in a jiffy and it was really practical. I could seriously put everything into action the same day that I'd learned it. I found it quite handy because while I do love planning and scheduling, honestly, it's, it, it's a fun activity for me. I have a ha bad habit of overwhelming myself and I couldn't understand why I was doing it or where I was doing it. And it really just helped me understand what I was doing. All right, so let's have a quick review and wrap this baby up. Five step process. You're taking your life goals from yesterday and you're listing out the habits that you need to do regularly to make those goals a reality. You're checking what you've done in the past to see if you know how to do those habits successfully. And if you don't, you're asking people here in the comments or friends and family for a referral to someone who could help. Then you're taking the main goal that you want for 2022, just one, and scheduling in the habits into a daily, weekly or monthly routine. Alrighty, over to you now. Press pause and get the work done.
Congratulations, welcome back. Let's celebrate your process today. This is vital. Praise yourself for starting this journey of 2022. You are awesome. And I'm so proud of you that you've reached this step. So let's blow out our candle. And let's say out loud. And I think today you really do deserve a celebration song. I have loved the last five days working with you. It's been fantastic. I've really enjoyed it. I've been doing it myself and then coming on here and doing 10 minutes. Please share this with anyone you know, but I'm taking it down in five days. It'll only be there for another week or so. Uh, but I just wish you all the very best. Much love to you.